I am Patrick Olive. I've worked on Untold Tales of Spider-Man, Spider-Girl, and Scooby Apocalypse. You're on Splash Pages. Excelsior! Hey everybody, I'm Drew with Splash Pages. We're at Terrific Con and we have a superb spider artist here. Uh, but he's also done other stuff. Uh, Pat, and it's again, it's Olive. Olive. See, this is why we rehearse. It's, yeah, it's like, the, it's like the, the little green thing that goes in martinis with an F. So okay. there you go. Olive, everybody. Make sure you get it right. Don't embarrass yourself in front of your heroes. So <laughs> one of the first things I know you from is the Untold Tales of Spider-Man. Now that was the project that they had for 99 cents to try to attract new readers to the book. And it was you working mostly with the great Kurt Busiek. So what was that like, working on that project with him? Oh, it was it was great fun. I mean, um, uh, it was kind of a dream come true because I'm an old school kind of guy. Mm -hmm. And um, right at that time, there wasn't a lot of old school options in terms of Spider-Man storytelling and Spider-Man uh, book. Um, so to get a chance to do that and then get the scripts each week or each month and watch how Kurt was like weaving these stories so expertly in and amongst the pre-existing Spider-Man stories, mm -hmm. that was fantastic. And, and uh, it allowed me to also you know, adopt a style that was easy for me to adopt because then I was trying to mix a traditional style like a Steve Ditko, um, but also try to modernize it a little bit, pulling in from um, guys like Rick Leonardi. He was a big influence on me too because I just loved how Rick um, handled the, the figure. Um, really elastic and it moved so great. So uh, it allowed me to, to not only tell those kinds of stories that I loved, but also um, um, use influences that I loved. So it was great. That was absolutely great. So, and then another Spider Project you worked on is you, you had some time on Spider Girl working with Ron Friends and, and Tom DeFalco. So, what was that like? You're working with these two creators on an alternate version of Spider Man at a time when it was primarily a lot of Peters. So, you got this is before the multiverse kind of exploded, you know? Yeah, long before any of that kind of stuff. So, uh, it, it, again, it was great. I mean, I love working with Tom and. Um, um, you know, what Tom and Ron came up with in, uh, in What If uh, was such a great character that initially that was only supposed to be a, one, a What If. It wasn't really supposed to become a series. Uh, the reaction was so great that they decided to spin it off into a series. Um, they asked me to do it uh, because of my association with Untold Tales, which was super fun. Um, now, it also spun off a whole bunch of other MC2 characters and MC2 books. Right. So initially, I thought I would do something like uh, Avengers Next. I didn't realize that uh, um, at the time I'd end up on Spider-Girl, um, but Ron understandably wanted to stay close to the Thunderstrike character that he created. That was part of A-Next, so he would go do that book. They offered me Spider-Girl, which I was more than happy to do. Right. Uh, and then we just found a niche. I mean, we just found a connection to an audience that was just amazing because um, even in this day and age, uh, there's always an assumption that a new book will drop in sales as right. time goes by. Right. And we dropped a little bit and then stabilized. And all the readership, the fans just stuck with the book. And they just stuck with the book and stuck with the book. And Marvel would, you know, try to estimate when they were going to cancel us. Right. And, um, and it just, you know, those, those, those estimates never came true. They, the, the, the readers stayed loyal and those numbers stayed solid. And uh, I was on the book for five years. And then Ron came on for another five years. I think it was five, six years. I mean, that's extraordinary. I mean, you know, one of the longest running female characters in comic history, especially at Marvel. Um, it, was, it was just so much fun telling those kinds of stories. It was great. It was really great. So working on the character so long, how did you feel about her kind of first time debut in Beyond the Spider-Verse, even though she's a, a baby? Uh, yeah, I mean, just any time that, that that kind of thing happens, it's a thrill. You know, I mean, yeah, if she was a baby, you know, maybe at some point, They'll expand on that. Maybe she'll, uh, you know, be Spider Girl in the movies. Uh, but any time that that she is referenced or shown like that is just super exciting. I mean, the great thing is that even after ten years, um, there's still a fan base for her. I mean, there are still people that love the book, want to see the book. Um, when it was when it came out that she, in some version, was going to be in the movie, um, her fans her fans were excited about it. I mean, and this is a book that, like, even though it's not around anymore. People haven't walked away from the character. I mean, the fans are still committed to the character. So, absolutely. So, it's been fantastic. Yeah. And so, the last question I have is, you were one of the rotating artists for 52. <laughs> so, you know, you're working with Grant Morrison. You're working with Mark, Mark Way. You're working with Jeff Johns. All of these superb creators on this story, which is you're detailing a year yeah. in the DC universe. I mean, what was that like? Well, it was insane. Um, so... 
uh, people have asked me, how did we do it? Because, so basically they, 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 they had a set of rotating artists right. that were there every, every week, um, you know, back and forth. So you would be able to get a core group of guys that you knew they were going to produce the book every week and then would slide in other artists as they went along. Right. Um, the guy that made all that work was Keith Giffen. Right. Um, he was the guy that uh, provided layouts, he kept all the storytelling uh, structure correct, and then it was, uh, so flowed, fl flowed fluidly between all of us. Um, without Keith Given, that doesn't, it doesn't work. Right. It doesn't work. So it was just, it was a lot of fun. I mean, I got a chance to do characters, draw characters I never experienced before. Always loved, was a fan of uh, some of them. Never had a chance before. Um, but it was, it was great, but Keith Giffen is the reason that worked. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Pat. Everybody, please continue to support, check his work out, especially if you're a fan of Scooby-Doo. I recommend Scooby-Doo Apocalypse. <laughs> he did with Keith Given and J.M. Dematis, or Demetrius. Again, I'm horrible with names. Um, keep it tuned for Splash Pages. We are a lot more terrific on, and uh, Pat, thank you again. Thank you. It's been great. Um, um, I'm on Splash Pages, so thanks. <laughs> I, it's great. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. All right.